Do you guys like our eating setup? I'm shorter than Jesse, so this officially means we don't have to talk together. Yes. I was gonna say, this kind of looks like a relationship video, is, but it's this not. This is what happens when I sit down to eat. <laughs> so now we don't have to do a relationship video because they know how we make it work. So here's the deal. We've been wanting to do this video for a long time and we wanted it to be perfect and epic because what we're sharing is epic to us only. We want to do it now. We were going to do it like three times. <laughs> we have a very small window of time right now. Yeah. So I think we're ready to share with you guys. The plans. So one of the reasons that we have not shared our plans is because we didn't have them. Um, we, we decided <laughs> very kind of, not last minute, it's not the right word, but we, we had a go, no go date for the house. And <laughs> if we couldn't hit that date to start, then we weren't going to. The problem was our plans weren't really finished when we started breaking ground. In fact, we, our plans were barely keeping up with the build. Yeah, we had footing plans when we were doing the footings and then we had wall plans when we were doing the walls, but we weren't, we didn't have a complete house plan before we started. That's probably a completely different video as to why we did that mm -hmm. and how it's worked out. Um, but anyway, that's why we haven't shared our plans yet. Just a tiny bit of backstory. We never planned to build this house this soon. This was our 10 year plan and we're in year number two and we're starting the house. When we first arrived, we had drawn a very simple 24 by 36 gambrel roof, timber frame garage with a apartment above it. And we had dug the footings and we were ready to go. And we decided not to make that, not to build that. We had a couple of revelations. One, our property is extremely hot. And because for the time being, we're off grid and we kind of want to stay that way. We realized really quickly that in order to make a home that was comfortable, we would probably want to harness the hillside as a um, method of maintaining a uh, moderate temperature. So we scrapped the idea of building that house immediately. We didn't really have a plan B, but life kind of got in the way and we decided to explore and have fun with other things such as gathering food, getting firewood. That's why we built the cabin. There was a lot of kind of reactionary steps. So over the last two years, it's become obvious to us that we really don't know if we have it in us to build like two or three different houses on this property. Mm -hmm. So we thought if we could, we'd rather just build the house first, even if it takes longer and it's a little bit slower. For quite a while, Alyssa and I had talked about different house shapes, different house sizes, and it became obvious that we really needed to start working harder on the floor plan because the floor plan really does dictate the structure in many ways. And so over the winter, I had taken a couple of days here and there and I had worked on uh, using SketchUp and I had drawn up a couple of different timber frames that I thought we might like, but I didn't fully understand the engineering behind those frames. So I couldn't confidently say we can build this. And that kind of led us to another conversation where we felt like we needed somebody to help us draw a more visual set of plans. One thing that's definitely a marked difference between Alyssa and I is Alyssa is way more visual. Um, she needs more details in order to fully visualize something. And having a good rendering of a home helped her to understand what I was trying to communicate with my chicken scratch and my 3D drawings. So we ended up employing someone locally as a drafter to kind of help us conceptualize the structure that I had drawn. And they have software that allows them to put in roofing and materials and furniture and really make it look like a full home. Unfortunately, the outcome of that was a structure that wasn't really buildable and our floor plan in that structure was atrocious. Let's back up a minute. Here was our very, very first iteration. This is a 24 by 36 
We, for some reason, I don't remember why, decided to go with the single pitch roof. We did that because <laughs> of the south view. So our original, original plan before we even showed up to the property was a gambrel roof. And that was mostly because the length of the timbers to build a gambrel is shorter than the length that you need to build the frame you're looking at. So those rafters are very, very long. They're like 30 some feet long. Um, but once we got here, we realized that with a gambrel roof, something like this, you would have very little light coming in from the southern mm, side. I remember that. And so we thought that was a terrible design. And so we started rethinking the roof to capture the southern view of the property, which is something we've still done. And that kind of led us down the simplest method. My dad calls it a chicken coop roof, <laughs> um, which is a single pitch uh, structure. So that frame we just showed was uh, a frame that we felt was too small. And after we had met a local contractor and he informed us that a 24 by 36 garage was not really adequate for what we were trying to accomplish, we began kind of exploring the 36 by 36 frame. This one I think was actually like a 32 by 36 or some slightly larger frame than a 24, but it wasn't a full 36. So it was a very awkward design to try to figure out. And we were trying to break up this roof so that this wasn't one gigantic rafter. But again, we were trying to pick a frame and then make a floor plan that worked around mm -hmm. it. Our biggest fear with this one was that it would look weird. Well, what's funny <laughs> is in Maine, when we went to the timber frame workshop in Maine, we actually got to see several versions of this frame and they don't look that weird at all. But they also weren't two story on top of a garage. They were on the ground. So they had a more grounded look. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we felt the roof line was really kind of screwy. And that kind of brought us up to the next iteration of the plan. Well, even this, if you have a set of stairs going up to the loft, the loft is going to be extremely small. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, you're losing out on tons of space. Here was our third iteration. This could be built, but the company that we were working with to design this house, um, they focus a lot on using steel in their post and beam structures. And that's not something that Alyssa and I were super passionate about. We wanted to learn and, and use joinery. It was something we really, really wanted to do. And so this is a very buildable structure, but not for us. It, the, the overall design would have to be highly modified in order to make the joinery work. And probably the biggest problem, so this design is actually a response to the previous roof line. And through conversation and kind of exploring different roof ideas, the this design was um, decided upon. It's more of what's called a monitor style house. So you have a gable in the middle instead of on one side or the other. Back her up. And then you have a lean-to on either side. It minimizes the roof spans, which is nice. It gave us a lot of light up here because we had all these windows in this upper area. But overall, we again ran into this massive floor plan bottleneck. So we couldn't figure out anywhere convenient to put stairs, which everybody tells us that's a common problem. Doesn't matter what kind of house you build, nobody has room for stairs. And uh, the floor plan just didn't feel open the way we wanted it to feel. Everything felt very boxy. Every room felt like it was very isolated instead of having this more open feel. Like this view from the kitchen we felt if you could stand in the kitchen and look over to the living room, into the dining room, it would feel very open. But when you look at the layout of the floor plan, it doesn't feel that way at all. There's posts intersecting things. The living room is extremely tight. Mm -hmm. It's very cramped. Um, we had, I think it was Shelter that cautioned against using a spiral staircase. They're extremely romantic. But the reality of them, they say if you can fit normal stairs in, you'll probably thank yourself. You'll, especially if you plan to use the space. If it's not something you plan to use, then spiral staircase is an acceptable yeah, alternative. But this, if it's a usable space... This wouldn't have been an everyday space up here, going up and down those mm -hmm. stairs. There wasn't going to be a bathroom up there, no full-blown bedroom. It literally would have been a loft, probably for guests. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot of privacy. One thing we really wanted on our house is a wraparound deck. And for this particular set of plans, we decided to have the deck sitting within the floor plan versus building a deck on the outside of the home. And it really encroached on the floor space. Yeah, so instead of, so with this structure, instead of bringing the walls all the way out to the eave, we actually recessed those walls slightly. 
and extended the eave so that we would have a covered wrap deck, which we wanted because we wanted to be able to walk between the front and the back of the house without having to go down to the ground um, because it's so far up off the ground. And doing so makes it very difficult because of the roof pitch coming to this side, the east and west side. This was a really great idea, but the functionality of it we felt was maybe not as good as we, as we had anticipated. And it cost us a considerable amount of square footage in the overall frame. So we decided that maybe that design ne needed to go. So in the midst of all this, Jesse said, we need to take a timber framing workshop if we have any idea of building a timber frame together mm -hmm. and keeping our relationship intact. <laughs> yeah, so maybe jumping back for just a second. So this would have been sometime like in the winter, January, February, when we were working on this most current uh, plan that we just shared. But the previous summer, all summer long, Alyssa and I had done a couple of things. One, we purchased a bunch of timber framing books. And those are amazing books. Maybe we can share just a couple of those toward the end of this video in case you want to read up on the subject. We both read those books, but there was still this fundamental disconnect uh, between the two of us on frames and structures and floor plans and some of these things. Um, and so that made it obvious that we needed to do something hands-on. Mm -hmm. Now, we had done a tiny timber frame together. It was our battery box for our solar batteries. It was a very small project. It took us a couple of afternoons on a weekend, and I felt like that kind of closed the gap for Alyssa mm -hmm. and I. We were, we were closer to, to understanding what we're building, but we weren't together. And that's when we said, if we're gonna build this house, we have to, A, build a timber frame and we have to do it together, B. And it became brutally obvious, we've got to take a workshop. We settled on taking a course with Shelter Institute in Maine. We tried to find one closer, but some classes that were closer that we were interested in were already filled up and we were looking for something like two months in the future. And a lot of timber framing workshops fill up uh, long before that. And we weren't wanting to take one in fall because we were wanting to start building that summer. And Jesse suggesting we went to Shelter Institute, I wouldn't say it was a hard decision for me, but in my mind, I'm sure a lot of people kind of agree with this feeling. I felt like we have this huge financial burden ahead of us and we need to save every penny for building the house. It was an investment. However, that class opened up our minds so much and getting to know the shelter staff was invaluable to us. And we realized that they were timber framers. Not only that, they do build timber frames, but they're really passionate about teaching other people how to timber frame. Therefore, they welcomed people like Jesse and I, where other businesses, like they don't work with owner builders. So we are like a squeaky, annoying wheel because we have so many questions. We wanna do a lot of the work ourselves and Shelter loves that. They told us that they were willing to be there for us to hold our hand as much or as little as we wanted. They were willing to engineer our frame for us. They were let, willing to let us kind of design our frame, but then be willing to step in and do some sort of, you know, consulting package where we could work with them on the questions that we had, call them up last minute, um, really be hands-on with the design. And that transformed everything for us. For me, especially, but I think one of the most exciting parts of the Shelter Inst Institute's Post and Beam class is the engineering class and they walk you through all the general tenets and principles of engineering timber frames and i left the workshop thinking yes like now i can design a frame confidently because i can sit and spend the time looking at different pieces and so we also learned a lot about kind of some um, basic general rules of timber frames one of those is what they call a stable gable which is a 12 and 12 pitch roof uh, over a certain width of building that does not require any additional supports to keep it from swaying, sagging, breaking, etc. So when we came home from that, I felt like I had a lot more information that I could use to design a frame that we both liked and that we could build. One of the things that Alyssa and I have always agreed on since we started designing houses is that at the end of the day, it needs to be buildable by us. So it needs to be simple. We're not builders. We have no idea what we're doing. And so it, when we finished the design, it, ha it, it couldn't be extraordinary Our and ornate. It was, had to be 
simple. Our goal is not to be on the front page of a home builder's magazine for the most epic timber frame house in the world. No. We were okay with boring. And I can say after yep. putting in a hot summer, I'm happy we chose boring and I love our house. <laughs> yes, we wanted to just stick with something that's tried and true and fairly straightforward because we knew that the amount of bandwidth and mental power it would take to build the house would be far beyond our knowledge base and we couldn't be sitting trying to figure out extremely complex things. We needed it to be pretty simple, a box with a roof. And shelter helped us understand the benefits of simple design and so that also helped us kind of simplify that conversation in our head about the roof which was something we had struggled with over and over and over. And we finally came to a conclusion that a simple gable roof, good enough. Part of what was so attractive about the shelters program for us was that they build a 24 by 24 timber frame, which is big enough. You could do something with it. You could build a garage, um, you know, a mother-in-law apartment. It could be a house, a cabin. It's a full structure, which is something we really wanted. Um, Alyssa said earlier that we, we settled on shelter. We chose shelter. Like we, that's exactly what we were looking for. And we were shocked to find it because most workshops in our experience are, are you know, woodsheds or small cabins or smaller frames that teach you the basic principles of timber framing, but they don't give you the scope that we're talking about when we're talking about building a house. And so um, we were stoked to find shelter, first of all, and then that there was still room in the class just two months away. So upon arriving home from the timber framing workshop, I revisited the plan that we had originally drawn. And this was one I actually had spent quite a bit of time trying to make the, the monitor frame buildable. And one of the big takeaways from the workshop was the maximum span allowable in a single bay, which was 20 feet. And so I began designing this frame around a 20 foot span here, which left us a 16 foot span here, and then designed the top plates and the rafters and everything based on the stable gable. And I actually used all the engineering calculations from the workshop to build this frame. So I felt really confident that this frame was buildable and no one can deny the amount of loft space that we gained by such building a huge difference. such a massive roof. This frame, Alyssa and I both liked. We felt that the roof really complemented the height of the structure. That all made sense. Suddenly we had room for stairs both below and above and the possibility of having more living space without really putting in any extra effort in building the house. While Jesse was doing the engineering on the frame, the floor plan was more up to me, which I'd say worked really well. It took a lot of, of kind of just moving things around and even tweaking stuff every ever so slightly. So for example, the bathroom here, Alyssa really wanted a walkthrough bathroom. She wanted to be able to access it from the master, but also from the living area. And that's because we do have a small space and we yeah. can't fit two bathrooms in there. And we wanted the master bedroom on the living level because we don't want to finish the loft right away. At the same time, we want the option of still closing a door and having somewhat of a private bathroom. So in a small space, um, I think that worked out well. Yeah, so it took a little bit of kind of exploring because we wanted to make sure we had a pretty generous closet, which even five by six isn't that big, but it's a, it's a decent closet for the master. But for example, this post here could be a problem because there's a sink. And so that post is going to intrude a little bit on the interior space. And we wanted to make sure that we had a very open feel from the kitchen into the living room. Mm -hmm. We wanted to feel like this was one big space instead of all broken up. And so we needed to play around with, because we had originally talked about putting the kitchen up here in the upper corner, overlooking the hot tub deck, etc. But then the kitchen is its own room and you're very detached from the rest of the house, which I yeah. never want to feel. Yeah. And we decided that we're going to spend most of our time in, in, the the, front. in the living area. Therefore, yeah. that's where the view should be. And we'll sacrifice on having a view from the master bedroom. Yeah, and I mean, we want privacy in the master bedroom and we want it to be cooler in the summer for sleeping. So it makes sense to put it in the northeast corner. Probably mm -hmm. the coolest room in the whole house will be the mm -hmm. master bedroom. Mm -hmm. It'll be cold in the winter, but for us, adding heat is much easier than cooling something down. We have such a beautiful view that we wanted to make sure that the southern exposure was really rich. 
And so we wanted to design around having the living spaces on the south side. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to design around having a lot of natural light coming in. So Alyssa really did move stuff. I mean, I can't tell you how many oh times this floor plan changed. Uh, we wanted an office or another bedroom. We have no idea what it'll be used for in the immediate future. It's just another space. We wanted a mudroom, a pretty large mudroom because like, let's be honest, we use that more than our front door. This is where the stairs will be coming up from the garage and then there'll be a door out to the hot tub deck or the back of the hillside. And we feel like this area is a great spot for all of our muddy boots and our jackets. There's a closet accessible from the mudroom. Um, the loft, we haven't really decided on. We do want a second bathroom in the loft and maybe a bedroom, but this main living level floor plan will serve our needs for a very long time. Another reason we we designed the house this way is we wanted to really think about the flow of people. So we plan to have a deck in the front and so we wanted to be able to walk in and go straight to the kitchen and not have to walk all the way through the house to yep. get to the kitchen. So this will probably down the road become the main entrance. For now our main entrance will be through the garage and kind of jumping back we wanted to think about flow so for example we want to be able to come up through the garage and go out the back door so that we can go out to the back patio without walking through the house conversely if you want to come from the hot tub deck come inside and go down to the garage you can do that without walking through the house so really flow was a huge consideration with the design or the floor plan here to make sure that you're not constantly walking from one end of the house to the other to access different areas of the property. Should we show them the video? What do you think? Yeah, I think this is probably a great time to kind of show, because we've shown them a lot of what we would call like 2D elevations mm -hmm. or just drawings. Um, Alyssa put a lot of effort into getting a rendering, creepily lifelike. <laughs> of this floor plan in real space. And I can't even tell you how amazing it feels to have that information. Here she is. I asked our designer to put a, a Ford truck in the driveway. Is that what that is? It looks <laughs> yeah. like a Dodge. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know my car is well enough. Truck, my truck's well enough, I'm sorry. So having this rendering really helped us to visualize the exterior, the glass, the, the uh, ratios of the building, mm -hmm. um, and kind of looking at finishes, um, things like that, even though this is so far in the future. But it really did help us to visualize, you know, what the structure could look like when it is finished. Mm -hmm. And at first the roof looks absolutely massive, but we felt like the large roof really offset or balanced the height of the overall structure. It really so does. it didn't look like this massive house with this weird shallow roof. I think we're going in. Watch out! Watch out! Ah, ah. Who's flying this drone? <laughs> And then, of course, for Alyssa, the interior, helping her to visualize mm -hmm. what could fit, how it looked, the finished quality. What's hard is when you're designing on a computer screen, it's easy to think you have a ton of room or not a lot of room. And when you see things more real life, you can actually see what that space is going to look like. So, for example, the kitchen, we were concerned that the kitchen would be too small. So we spent quite a bit of time really thinking about how much, you know, counter space and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we had always, we love islands. So uh, seeing that island sitting in the kitchen really helped a lot mm -hmm. and kind of gave us a feel because we feel like the counter space is quite limited in the kitchen, but the island we feel like really opens that up and it gives the, the kitchen kind of a more cozy feel. It also helped us to visualize the light from you know the outside and kind of getting a feel for how you know shade and shadows and things would feel in that area the kitchen is definitely not massive but we feel like having a considerable amount of glass on the front which would be the south and the east side helps to make you feel like you're kind of outside so while the space isn't massive it doesn't feel cramped either We wanted the living room to feel both cozy, but also to feel like it's expansive. 
clearly the frame is not massive. So we felt like using a considerable amount of glass and windows would help you to feel like mm -hmm. you're outside, feel like you're enjoying the ex exterior, but also it's, it's quaint enough that you feel kind of closed in and, and, mm -hmm. and cozy. We'll talk about windows probably in another video because we've spent like two weeks on windows alone and this rendering is not 100% accurate. Um, just for example, these windows are a little too high. They're not flush with the top of that door. We're gonna have three here instead of two. They're not gonna be pushed up to the frame, so don't judge this based on the windows. This is gonna be a full window, not like a halfsy, and we're gonna have skylights on the sides, so there's gonna be a lot of glass on the south side. Yeah, using the southern light uh, was something that we really wanted to, to maximize, so we had as much natural light in the structure as possible. Um, kind of jumping back, we opted to not put any skylights and no mm -hmm. sun tunnels in our roof. We wanted to keep our roof in one piece if we could. This hallway feels really tight in this mm -hmm. drawing, but it's four feet wide, which is actually a really wide hallway. So this is the mud room where we will actually enter, but we have to go through an imaginary door because it's not shown in this yeah. rendering. <laughs> These three windows you see are just to allow natural light into the stairwell that goes down to the garage. They're gonna be opaque, so you don't feel like you're looking down into the garage, but they just provide a little bit of natural light into that area, just so you feel less claustrophobic or pitch black as you dive into the garage. This area will probably be quite used. Uh, mm -hmm. We plan on you know, stacking groceries here or taking our boots on and off. I um, feel like this area is gonna see a lot of use. We put closet space in here because we wanted to be able to put coats and things away as you come into the house. And that would be the loft stairs leading up to the loft. I don't think we have anything no. that helps to visualize a loft because because we haven't about it. visualized the loft. And that's our office space, just kind of visualizing a monitor like the one that you're looking at right now, with transom window above to let natural light in from the south, and then a large picture window from the west. Here's the master bedroom. The master. One of the things that we really wanted in the timber frame was pretty high ceilings. Um, as it is right now, the height to the bottom of the floor joist is about 10 feet. So even though the room isn't really big square footage wise, I believe this master is 12 feet by 16 feet. Um, the height of the ceiling is going to make the room feel spacious. It also gave us room for a transom window over the bed so that we maintain privacy and insulation because that's on the north wall which you want to have minimal glass on the north wall for heat loss but it also will let in quite a bit of natural light and because of that we actually have transom windows above the closet and the bathroom to let more light in to those areas without obviously having to turn on a light One of the things that we designed into this room was making sure that a king size bed mm -hmm. would fit. We're not sure if that's something that we'll actually have or not, but we wanted to make sure that it fit well and that it wasn't an afterthought in case it's something we decided to add in later. El Baño. We really wanted a bathroom that we could also put like a washer and dryer in there so we opted for a stackable design since you're going up. Um, this is a it's a cozy looking bathroom. I, I feel like it might be a little more spacious than it looks on here. I feel like the like the counter for the sink is pretty dang massive but um, it's okay it's not a room that you spend a lot of time in. So it was really challenging because we had some minimum bathroom size stuff that we were working with and we didn't feel the need to use up a lot of square footage for the bathroom. Um, it's going to be a fairly tight and it's a multi-use space so the bathroom door can open it's going to cover up this kind of folding table and this kind of storage area. We're okay with that the stackable washer and dryer makes this a multi-use mm -hmm. room instead of having to have a separate laundry room. 
Yeah, so uh, we spent a lot of time designing around normal um, sizes mm -hmm. or, yep. or um, whatever they're called, fixtures. So Alyssa made sure that there's enough room in there for a tub shower. And then um, you also have to look at how much space do you need around the shower, the sink, the toilet, and you need to make sure that those don't overlap too much. So there's a lot that goes into designing. And I think this might be where like more of an architect comes into play. Yeah. Um, and Ethan was helpful in a lot of this stuff. He was able to kind of tell us like, yeah, I think you have enough room there. Or, no, that door is in the way here. You're going to mm -hmm. need more space. Little things too that like, for example, in this rendering, I can tell you that this if, if we actually built it, the door would need to swing the other way. So the doorknob is going to be blocking the access to the bathroom. So these are those little things that you have to really think about mm -hmm. as you design a space is the flow of the space to make sure you don't have a, a something blocking something else. The garage is pretty straightforward. We actually have a 16 foot garage door on the west, which is a two car garage. Then we have a man door or a woman door, depending on what kind of person you are. And that access is kind of a workspace and then an eight foot garage door. And that side of the garage is just a workspace. That's all, it's not a shop. It's just a place that's weather protected. It's climate controlled. So we can work all four seasons inside canning, fixing things, working on tools, small woodworking projects, things like that. We wanted to make sure that we didn't have a separate building that we had to heat, plow, mm -hmm. roof, paint, and take care of so that we could do small projects. This is not a shop. Um, someday down the road, we'll build a shop so we have that space to work in and we can get grease monkey crazy in there. In the garage, we do have a full bath even though it's gonna be fairly small. Mm -hmm. We wanted that because our goal is to initially move the RV into the garage so that we can be more climate controlled and protected from the weather. And so we wanted to make sure that we had a full bath downstairs. Um, right next to it is our mechanical room and that's where our radiant systems will be housed for the concrete slab and- Solar batteries. Solar batteries, inverters, um, electrical, water main, all that fun stuff will actually be in the basement. This is actually fairly representative of how the the garage will be finished, <laughs> as in it will be sheetrocked. We've even got our dang buttress and our steel beam in here. <laughs> yep, they did a great job rendering this stuff out. So we've got posts, as you can see, there's a, actually a post there. We actually have a piece of sewer sticking up here that's not um, rendered. But anyway, this will be a somewhat finished looking garage when we're all done. We'll have to sheetrock all that for fire protection, uh, especially with cars below the living space. You wanna make sure there's a fire barrier there. And that's... There's our house. This looks more tropical. And those are our palm trees that we don't have. <laughs> palm the... trees and pine trees. And pine trees, Because this yeah. is our dream world. We can have whatever <laughs> trees we want. Yeah. And I think that having this rendering has been really helpful for Alyssa and I to mm -hmm. visualize some of this stuff that it, we can look at it in 2D elevations, but looking at it as a composite really helps to help each other um, come to an agreement on how things should be built or designed. And it creates a more continuity between Alyssa and I in the in the design process. So that about does it, guys. There's more we want to share. Um, feel free to ask questions. Well, maybe you know, depending on what we get, we could do different videos addressing different things. But yeah, of course, we're gonna build it. I think that's one of the biggest gaps. So one of the biggest takeaways so so far is that it's it's fun to do this stuff. It's fun to draw mm -hmm. it. It's smart to visualize stuff before you build it. It's much easier to make a change on software and move windows around mm -hmm. and change door locations on software than it is to do it in real life. So we don't regret spending quite a bit of money on these renderings. We've had two completely different people design and engineer a, a plan for us, which was quite expensive. <clears throat> but we're glad we went through those iterations. We spent roughly two years in different stages of planning for this house. We feel like we probably could have spent another year planning and felt like we had a more robust design before we started building, but we really needed to get started building. So take your time with design, I think something we can share. And using these types of visualizations, which we have now, even this a video that I wanna make, I actually want to build a scale model of mm -hmm. our frame. 
This is something that the Shelter Institute teaches you in their design build class, not the post and beam class, to visualize these structures and to make models mm -hmm. of them. It is way, way easier <clears throat> to make a balsa wood model of your frame than it is to build a real frame. So this has been a, a two year process for us. We're gonna be going through this until we're done building the house because we didn't spend enough time prior to starting to complete the design. Well, listen, I wanna make it very clear that we do not claim to be experts on this stuff. We are learning as we go. The amount of knowledge we've had to gain to even get to this stage makes our brains hurt most every day. And we're bridging between trades. So we don't just get to sit and make house plans all day. We actually have to get out there and work with the materials and figure out how to build the thing that we're designing. And my dad always says that the perfect house hasn't been built yet, they're still planning it. And that's how we feel. We are probably going to discover things about this floor mm -hmm. plan that we screwed up. Oh yeah. We've already had some challenges with building with materials that we're not familiar with and we've learned so much. So we feel like this is kind of like our first child. We're gonna screw it up really good and we wanna apologize in advance to that child. But the second one will be perfect, But the right? second child will be a lot better and the third one will probably actually get it right. Yeah. <laughs> so we wanna just kind of really embrace this whole process and we try not to get frustrated too much when we have insights about how we built the house that really frustrates us. And there are times like somebody told me, I think it was our concrete guy, Eric, told me he's been on builds before that went through an entire architect, through a designer, through a drafter, and they had been approved by the contractor, by the customer and everything. And they were digging it and went, holy crap, how did nobody notice this? Mm -hmm. So you can only design on paper so much. And at some point you've got to build the house. And that's where we are. We're just building it. We've, we feel like we've spent enough time planning that we feel confident we can actually mm -hmm. build this structure. And we did actually consult with Bugaboo he really only had one thing to say. He wants his own cubby. He wants lots of space to crawl around in and meow a whole bunch <laughs> all the time. So his thoughts have been considered in this design. We made a timber frame so that he can run around like a crazy cat mm -hmm. on timbers all day. Um, Bugaboo, they were wanting you to talk about the house plan. Later. Is there anything that you wanted to say? Okay, well, I guess we'll just end this video then and maybe if you want to say something some other time, you can publish your own video. Maybe Bugaboo can make his own video.